I'm Tom Ma from Tsinghua University. Today, I will present my work, an efficient framework for implementing persistent data structures on asymmetric NVM architecture. This work also gained assistance from Xu Haijian at USC and Zhuo Song from Alibaba. Remote direct memory access, also known as RDMA, is predicted to become more and more popular in modern data centers due to the dramatic improvement of performance. The newest generation RDMA NIC can support 200 gigabits per second bandwidth with an ultra-low latency. On the other hand, RDMA is well known for its kernel bypass zero copy to serve as crucial component for interconnecting resource bladders. Emerging non volatile memory is blurring the line between memory and uh, storage. These kinds of memories, such as the Intel Optin DC persistent memory, PCM, STTM, and uh, memory store, are better addressable and uh, provide a DRAM like performance, high density, and uh, persistency at the same time. In this work, we focus on current uh, commercial production into a Optin DC persistent memory. Disaggregation was first proposed for capacity expansion and memory resource sharing. Disaggregation architecture is a paradigm shift from servers which are tightly integrated with a small amount of resources like CPU, memory, storage to the disaggregated data center built as a pool of standalone resource bladders and interconnected using a network fabric. It can provide the best resource utilization and the ease of hardware deployment. Due to these advantages, disaggregation is considered to be the future of data centers. There are several works about how to combine RDMA and NVM from different aspects. We can conclude them into three architectures. Symmetric architecture is wide use in distributed system in which each machine has its own NVM device to achieve good availability on top of persistency. One needs to replicate its, its data structures to multiple NVM devices. Network attached storage is designed based on the principle of decoupling storage and computation. Compared to asymmetric NVM architecture. The key distinction is that NAS heavily relies on file system service in the storage node. It's based on the block access interface. So read-write uh, amplification is unavoided, in essential. These challenges are due to the nature of current NVM deployment. To fundamentally overcome the drawbacks, we rethink NVM deployment and propose the better addressable asymmetric NVM architecture. NVM devices are not associated with the individual machine and are accessed at better level, only pass possibly via fast network. In asymmetric NVM architecture, the number of NVM devices which can be provided as specific like the bladders can be much smaller than the number of machines. Compared to the symmetric architecture, a NVM architecture offers four advantages. It can enjoy the benefits of disaggregation. It naturally match the, matches the desire of sharing NVM. <coughs> it ensures availability with multiple backend, and the backend node not can be implemented in simple manner that leads to better reliability. Now, we face three challenges. The first challenge is network latency. Also, the bandwidth is comparable to NVM. The latency is not. RDM operation is about 2 milliseconds, much larger than the latency of NVM. Simply replacing local operations with RDMA operations will significantly degrade the performance. The second challenge is how to efficiently use the small volatile space of the front end. The high density of NVM devices max is capable to hold a terabyte of data, but the memory space of a typical front end is only tens of gigabits. This asymmetry implies that only the necessary data in the current uh, work set should be loaded into the front end. 
during execution. The third challenge is the design of backend interface. That is both effective and simple with good reliability. Specifically, backend should be only re responsible of performing a small collection of simple APIs, such as remote memory read-write, allocation, lock acquire release, and so on. Next, we will introduce the design details uh, about how to design system with an asymmetric NVM architecture. This table illustrates the APIs of asymmetric NVM. The first set of APIs provides a transactional interface that allows the frontend to push a list of update logs to the backend to achieve persistency. The second set of APIs holds memory management, which include remote memory allocation, releasing the third set of APIs deals with concurrency control with single writer, multiple reader support. The implementation details will be discussed soon. This figure shows how to use asymmetric VM underlying APIs to implement the insert operation of skip list. The program for the lock is the insert position by using multiple RDM reader then allocates the remote VM resource and flash one operation log to the backend immediately for recovery. Next, it appends memory log to frontend buffer. Finally, the buffered memory logs will be flashed to the backend NVM. Each write will generate several memory logs, and the backend provides the transaction APIs to ensure that the memory logs are persisted automatically in an or nothing manner to implement a, a remote NVM transaction write. Asymmetric NVM framework library constructs a continuous set of memory logs and appends to the corresponding log area in remote NVM through a single RDMA write. The format of these memory logs is shown in uh, this figure. The crucial benefit of operation log it is that it enables batching and caching. Once the operation log are recorded, the modifications on the real data structure can be postponed and batched to improve the performance while ensuring crash consistency by asynchronous execution to remove network latency from the critical path, even after a crash, the state can be restored by replaying the operation logs. In short, memory log is lower level log without data structure semantics and used by backend to re-apply updates on persistent data structures. Operation log is high level log with data structure operation semantics for recovery. Let's see the workflow of SME NVM in get phase. The data are first to try to fetch back from the front-end cache. If not cache hit, the data will either be read from the back-end directly, otherwise its corresponding page will be swept in and put to the cache. After finishing the page swapping, data is read from front-end cache. The choice between these two strategies depends on specific data structures and follows a principle that using swap in for hot data and direct remote read for code data. In apply phase, each modification operation causes one operation log to be flushed to the backend for recovery. While flushing the logs, the cached data are modified accordingly. If a number of operations get executed successfully or the buffer is full, the buffered memory logs will also be flushed to remote NVM. These logs are then handled by the backend and replicated to the mirror node. Similar as BW tree, the frontend manages a hash map to translate the address of data structure nodes in NVM to address in DRAM. Our cache replacement policy combines the methods of LRU and RR. We use a hybrid approach. First, choosing a random set of pages for replacement and then select a, a least used page from the set to discard. At the backend, we implement NVM management APIs since using only one-sided RDMA operation is inefficient. We use the 
RFP RPC to implement the interfaces, so the backend is passive and doesn't need to handle any network operation. To ensure persistency, we further use a persistent bitmap to record the usage of NVM. We use global naming space in the backend NVM for recovery. The metadata are stored in the well-known location to our frontend and backend. A point to the backend NVM is still valid after restarting. We use a hash table to index those cr critical metadata, and each item in the hash table contains tape, name, and physical address, which links to the related metadata file. The backend allocator provides fixed size slabs to the frontend allocator, and the frontend manages these slabs in fine grained. The slabs in the frontend are organized in three lists of full, partial, empty lists according to the capacity consuming in the corresponding page. We use a simple best fit mechanism to implement a front-end allocator. When allocation size is larger than the size of a slab, the front-end node directly allocates memory in the back-end using RPC. Front-end node will reclaim free blocks periodically when exists the maximum free block number. Then it will send the request to the back-end to free the reclamation slabs through RPC. We leverage the RDMA atomic verbs, comparing a swap to implement it as a write lock. When releasing the lock, the writer resets it via RDMA write <coughs> to handle the futures while holding the lock. Every write lock acquire release operation should the writer record to the backend. Our designs can be divided into lock-based and lock-free data structures. The data structures uh, will first make copies of the corresponding if uh, needed in the lock-free data structure. Then the data will be modified or new data items are inserted. We provide a lazy garbage collection mechanism to ensure safety reclaimed. For lock-based data structures, we implement a retry-based of optimistic read locks by using the sequence number. Lock-free data structure benefit the reader but create multiple copies by writers. Lock-based data structures priority the writer without actual copies, but readers have to read multiple times until consistent data are obtained. The right truth depends on specific application. The SME NVM needs at least one mirror node attached with a non-volatile device like SSD disk or even NVM. The backend node replicates the memory operation logs to mirror nodes before committing the transaction and acknowledging the front-end. The re replication phase is performed asynchronously without an acknowledgement after replication completes. Similar to most distributed systems, we use a consensus-based voting system to implement least-based Kappa Life service to detect machine failures. We provide case-by-case -case recovering guidelines. We use khash to eliminate the potential bottleneck due to the log. Uh, this partition can achieve both high throughput and bad Scalability. Each partition has its own write lock and index. These mapping tables between key range and the partition are stored in the global naming space for recovery. The underlying APIs are general to implement various data structures. We also propose data structure specific optimizations. The more details are in our paper. For instance, in tree-like data structures, the nodes in higher level are more frequently accessed than lower level nodes, so we choose to cache higher level leaf nodes with higher priority. In the end, I will uh, pre present our evaluations from four aspects. Here is our evaluation setups. Note that we use one of the namespaces to be re registered by RDMA for remote 
access. The naive implementation accesses a remote VM directly using RDM read and write without any optimizations. The complete implementation can provide nearly 4 to 12 times the improvements compared to naive implementation. We also measure the throughput of multiple frontends sharing one VM without issues that the scalability is almost linear. We measure the performance of batching with vector operations on the different batch size. Multi, multi, -version, multi version data structures have lower improvement because of path copying. The batching can effectively reduce such overhead. We also measure the benefits of caching on the different cache size. In conclusion, the throughput increases with the increase of cache size. We use a YCSB tool to uh, generate skill workloads and uh, some industry workloads from an uh, online ser service of Alibaba. The workloads trace of real-world application behaviors and uh, satisfy the power load distribution. SME NVM performs co good on the industry workloads and the skilled workload. Okay, that's all of my presentation. Thank you very much.